moving through Monaghetti. Oh, Peter Mayer, Canadian, out of the race. Don't know why. Looks a bit distressed, obviously, but he was running well for the first part of the race. The odd thing, Brandon, is he's very experienced marathoner, but uh, I mean the pace can't have uh, done much to him. Or if he's had a fall, or maybe carrying an injury that he came into the race with. That's the most likely explanation. Well, the next. Uh, 5,000 meter mark, we should see an increase in pace. But the weather forecasters, as they occasionally do, seem to have got it wrong. We were told it wouldn't rain again, it's pouring down. Just watch Steve Monaghetti. He's a picture of concentration. Just concentrating on his running. He's not looking around. He's not bothered what's going on around, around him. He's in complete control there. The difference between him and Pat Carroll, a much less experienced marathon runner, Pat looking all around the place, having the odd word with one or two of the others. Monaghetti, a picture of effortless concentration. Mark Hudson's just behind him. Liam Basso, the Kenyan there too. Dave Buzzer, the other Englishman in there, and Dale Rickson, the Welshman, well, his time at Boulder, Colorado, training with Steve Jones has not done him any harm. He's running a fine race so far. These athletes heading up Government Street. The oldest street west of the Rockies, as our driver told me this morning on the way to the marathon. 15 kilometers, 48.25, so 15.44 for that five kilometer split. And we were absolutely right, they did pick, pick up the pace. That's more respectable marathon running pace. That's 2.13 pace. So they've moved the pace down from 2.18 to 2.13. And it's Steve Monaghetti who's been responsible for that, just pouring it on just lifting it up to the marathon pace that he's used to. And you can see them just being strung out gradually. trying to dictate, Carroll responds, so does the Kenyan, now Basso and Hudson. Two Canadians rather on there, there's out. Four two seven and uh, McKelm from South Africa with the leaders for the first time. Just been at the back of that group most of the time. Boys, Aco, Tanzania. Woo, woo, woo. 
two canyons together. Uh, Buster, you've seen. Rotich is uh, 333. Actually, this marathon was tinged with a little bit of sadness when the athletes heard, and we got the news through from Tanzania the other day, that the bronze medalist from the last Commonwealth Games, Simon Robert Narley, who was out training for this race, was knocked over by a car just outside his hometown of Arusha in Tanzania, was rushed to hospital, was, in con was concussed in hospital, then allowed out of hospital, and a few days later, he was rushed back into hospital where he died. He's the bronze medalist from the last Common Commonwealth Games, Simon Robert Narley. there with Mark Hudson, he only took a cup of water and didn't actually take much of it on board. Hasn't got the uh, drinking bottle like Steve Monaghetti has, but I'm sure over the years as his career pans out over the marathon, he'll probably need to get used to drinking on the run, because in a hot marathon, you definitely have to do that. He hasn't taken much liquid on board, but the cool conditions here, just looking over his shoulder, just checking that they're not too far behind him. Mark Hudson seems to be wanting to be very competitive today. Colin Moore just behind him and Dave Buzzer, so the three Englishmen still in that group, as is Dale Rickson, the Welshman. Three Australians in the group, two Kenyans. It's still a big group, and the increase of pace there so that we saw for the last five kilometres, the fastest five kilometre split of the race, 15.44. Well, that that's 213 pace, but these boys are not going to be troubled by that unless it's sustained 213 pace. Of this course, 
the road service is very good indeed. Colin Moore, two, three, three. Tucked in behind Monaghetti. And Nyan Batu. Looking ahead for the rest of the day's programme. I think the organisers are hoping that this rain will cease before the track final start. The first one will be at five past nine British time, 1500 metres for women. And also, of course, they'll be praying, I would think, that uh, this torrential rain doesn't ruin the closing ceremony. Getty, Hudspeth, Carroll, Mambasso, Moore, Buzzer, Rochich, the Kenyan, all three Canadians, Deacon, Nelson, uh, all two Canadians, sorry, uh, Deacon and Nelson, Peter Mayer, dropped out. The Taffy from Zimbabwe in the all green, very prominent. Sustaining the pressure. Knows the distance so well. Knows himself so well. Back along uh, Dallas, along the coastal road. Actually, when they reach that point on the next lap, They'll turn the other way and go out on a new loop. I'm impressed, Brendan, by the way Monaghetti's running this. He's turning the screw slowly all the time, and I suspect the next 5,000 metres will show a slight increase in pace again. As we do look down the field of the Ugandan with Juni, there in 3-3-6 and 3-3-8, two Lesotho athletes, Matabani and Rala Kessler. But Monaghetti does look smooth, very compact, very efficient. You can see his carriage is very, very efficient compared with Pat Carroll, who's a fine athlete, but isn't as anywhere near as economical as Steve Monaghetti. On the inside there, Mark Hudspeth, Dale Rickson, and Monaghan, he's just happy to string them along at his pace. He's not trying to break away from the field yet as they go past Beacon Hill Park. He's just trying to apply a little bit more pressure to bring some of these athletes into an area of tiredness and into a pace that they have not performed at before. But there's still two Kenyans in the group, there's still two, three Englishmen in the group. There's still two Canadians in the group. Plus three Australians. Sean Quilty has joined in with uh, Monaghetti and Pat Carroll. Right in the centre of that group, wearing number 26. another psychological point in the marathon when they've been running for just over an hour 
when the coaches talk to them, they talk about getting the first race, the first hour out of the way, or getting to the halfway mark, and then start thinking about tactics. Well, they've got an hour's running in their legs, and they now know how they're feeling. They'll know whether the preparation's been right or not. A lot of them were preparing, Mark was included, preparing to run in hot weather conditions. And you can hear the rolling thunder, the rain still coming down strongly. I don't think any of them will be disappointed, but I think quite a few of them will be surprised after the, we the weather we had yesterday. And now the men's marathon, they've been lucky with the weather. significant time halfway all three of the Kenyans in that pack Rotich and uh, Nabato have been joined by 323 Kyoko Teaming up with Hudspe. Fifteen forty four for the last five thousand meters. Gradually the pace increasing. Quite amazing, that's exactly the same split as the previous five kilometers, but the early pace has now been lifted. They were running 16.20 for the first five kilometers, then 16.14, and now two consecutive 5,000 meter bursts of 15.44. And I still sense that Steve Monaghetti is just applying the pace, just applying the pressure, and eventually, once they get past halfway, I'm sure he'll begin to think about lifting the pace, increasing the pace. Psychologically, when you get past halfway, you're in the race. Mark Hutzpah running a fine race there, as is Dale Rickson. At the back of the group there, I can just see Colin Moore struggling a little, but Dave Buzzer, the other Englishman, running well, just compact there within that group, just having a quiet run so far. Pat Carroll running well there on the outside, the Australian number 46. And Sean Quilty, the Australian national champion, just behind Steve Monaghetti. first 10,000 metres was leisurely run at 32.41 and then as Steve Monaghetti started to pick the pace up 
the second 10,000 metres was run in 31.28. So they've increased the pace significantly. And I think they're beginning to build that momentum. He's got them running the pace he wants them to run at. He wasn't very happy at the slower pace, and now he looks more comfortable. The favourite as he's approaching halfway now. Quite a difference, Brendan. One minute, 13 seconds faster in the second 10,000 metres. A considerable difference. few seconds the clock should freeze at the halfway point at 2 hours 15 pace and I shall be very surprised indeed if the second half of the race isn't much faster than the first well that seems to be the current trend but having gone through in 1736 I would, be, I would agree with you that I'd be surprised if the winner doesn't run under 215 which means a negative split in the marathon the hard way to do it Mark Hutzler knows what he's doing he's very happy to be here now he's very happy to be in the lead just past the halfway in the marathon Getty in the edge of the shot. And before the race started, he talked to Brendan Foster about what it might be like at the halfway stage. At halfway, it's very significant because it's the point where you know from here you're heading home, and uh, no matter what the time is, it's, it's probably irrelevant in a championship marathon like this. It's more the the people that are in the group, and, and you're really starting to say, well. If I'm feeling good enough, I'll, I'm, I'm starting to plan my strategy as to where I'm going to actually put it to the other guys. So this is where you've, you've got over, the, the preliminaries are gone, and now you're starting to head for home. The voice of Steve Monigetti is in the middle of the pack there, wearing number 21. Bombasso, 311, winner of the Bombasso Marathon this year. Looks incredibly like a Guta who won the 10,000 metres yesterday. Getting that good shot of him there, doesn't he? He certainly does. And looking from the side, the same action, the same style, the same approach to the thing. And a Guta is a better marathon runner than he's ever been a 10,000 metre runner. And we were surprised when Aguda decided to run the 10,000 metres, but that was a glorious victory for him yesterday. I wouldn't mind running a check on these, uh, on these three Kenyans. Well, you've got a check there. But they're almost doubles. Kyoko, 3-2-3. Mombasa race last year.
Getty. Again, applying pressure as the legislative assembly. Now that I'm part of the course, they're getting to know quite well. But don't forget, when they get back to that coastal road, that they turn the other way this time, out on a new loop. But that's some way away. And there the welcome sight of the harbour as they head out for the last time. Ten kilometres out and ten kilometres back. A beautiful morning for running. Very supportive crowd along the harbour here today. But when they come back here for the last time, you'll find the crowds will have multiplied because they're all watching it on television. And then they came out like they did yesterday for the women's marathon. And Steve Monaghetti, as he told us in his pre-race discussions, he told us that he's getting his drink safely. He told us that once the race got to halfway, then the business began in earnest. Number three, four, four, six there, Smartex Tambala from Malawi. And the Kenyan Kyoko leading, Steve Monaghetti. Number 245, Mark Hudson. The other Kenyan, Pat Carroll. Dale Rickson, the Welshman. Those, that group beginning just to edge away. Further down the field, Swaziland athletes, Gininza and Steve Monaghetti, smooth running, well in control. Mark Hudson is running in that group too. Kyoko, the Kenyan. Benedict Aiko the Tanzanian. And the other Kenyan, 311, causing us a little bit of concern here. He looks remarkably like the winner of the 10,000 meters yesterday. Monagetti had enough of his drink. Now, like he said to us earlier, down to business. Just checking around who's in the group. And you can sense the pace beginning to lift now. A group of five, including Mark Hutzpeth. Then a gap to Sean Quilty, the Australian. Dale Rickson, the Welshman. Dave Buzzer, the Englishman. But five of them beginning to draw ahead now. Steve Monagetti. Well, he'll never get a better chance to win a gold medal. Conditions to his liking, course to his liking. Dave Buzzer there. Well, that's the end of the road for Buzzer. He was running well just about a, half a mile ago. I saw him there, he looked smooth, looked good. And now he's having a discussion about why he stopped running. Mark Hudson won't know that. He won't want to know that either. Dave Buzzer spent a lot of time in Australia training. Sadly, today's not been his day. Mark Hutz does an aggressive run here, Mark. I always think you can pick out future champions when you see their approach to the first championship they run in. But Mark Hutz's approach to this championship has been perfect. He's not been overawed at all. He's not been worried by the reputations of the athletes around him. And he's been quite happy just to mix it at the front, not done anything silly. Knows exactly what he's doing. The accountant from Newcastle. 
His main task yesterday afternoon in his preparations for the marathon was to find out who scored for Newcastle in their victory. Kenyon running inside the cones there, which is, uh, I'm sure that was an accident, but that's against the rules. Pat Carroll just off the group beginning to work to try and get himself back to that group of five. Mark Hudspeth from England leading. Steve Monaghetti, Kyoko the Kenyan, and Sifas Matafi of Zimbabwe in the green vest of Zimbabwe. And the other athlete, number 311, it's supposed to be Zachary Nyambaso, but I'm concerned about the identity of that athlete. Pat Carroll just behind that group, and then Dale Rickson, the Welshman. athletes on this return journey passing the harbour where the cars file in single file every morning to take the car ferry across to Seattle which is only 45 miles away from here Mark Hudspeth looking very very good indeed Very, very heavy indeed, and thunder and lightning. Oh, that's it. They're really testing the opposition. Kayoko on the far side, the Kenyan. Monigetti of Australia. Zimbabwe. Kayoko, 3 2 3. 3 1 1. Nyan Basso. Carol looking a little weary just at the back of the group. The Australian. 25 uh, kilometres, 119.42. from Zimbabwe fourth this year in Belgrade one in Spain a couple of years ago he's only 23 just out on that coastal stretch they'll be feeling the wind slightly off the sea Checking back, uh, Brendan, I reckon that's the fastest 5,000 metres in the race so far, the last section. Well, they've gone through 25 kilometres in 69.42, which makes the last 5,000 metres 15.33. So you're absolutely right. The last previous fastest was 15.44. So now the group down to five, led by Mark Hutzford. He's running a fine race so far. To be here 
at this place, in this condition, in the Commonwealth Games Marathon, well, this is probably more than Mark expected. Possibly, though, not more than Jimmy Alder, his coach expected. Jimmy expects a lot of his athletes, and he usually gets it. He'll be out there somewhere. I'm surprised we haven't heard him yet. I'm sure if Mark stays in this position, we will hear him. But the thing was, that Jim said he hadn't, they'd, they'd had an agreement in the club that they wouldn't talk to Mark about medals. But he really believed that Mark could get a medal. And there, as we look in the back, you can see the Wanda Fuca Strait and the Olympic Peninsula in, in America, which is 35 miles across there. He looks impressive. Started out as favourite. Now it's his turn to make the others work. This the new loop of the course. Out towards Oak Bay. In the background, you may well see in a moment or so point where Captain Cook waded ashore over two centuries ago. I think they call it Clover Point, Brendan. They do, and that's because it was covered in clover when Captain Cook arrived. He arrived with his ship Discovery and Resolution, and he landed here to get them fixed, so he chopped down a few trees and used the wood to repair his ship, and thereby unknowingly started off the most important industry in this part of the world, the forestry industry and it's attributed to Captain Cook. Steve Monaghetti just applying the pressure there now, beginning to put the pedal down. The fastest 5,000 meters so far in this race has been 15.33, and I wouldn't be surprised if the next 5,000 meters was the fastest. McCallum of South Africa trying to close on the leaders. Now looking at 311, we said he looked like in Guta and we've just got a message through. The man who won the 10,000 meters yesterday in Guta, in Guta or Guta rather, and we've just got a message through the Kenyan headquarters. And the story is that Nyan Bassa is a Guta's brother. Well, that explains why I was thinking he was he's identical in style, identical in look. And he's running as well as his brother did yesterday. But Steve Monaghetti now, this is a significant move. Steve putting the pedal down now. He's starting to accelerate away from them. Concentration only looking at the road ahead. Mark Hutsworth in second place, just beginning to feel the effect of Steve Monaghetti's burst. And there it is, Monaghetti, 15 meters ahead of Mark Hutsworth in second place. Mark still looks comfortable, still looks strong. But that is a significant move by Steve Monaghetti. Gets his drink again. Mark looks like he's got a bottle of water this time. See what he does with that. It's a small bit of liquid on board. Running a fine race there in the silver medal position. And I am Barso there now in fifth place the brother of the 10,000 meter winner, just drifting off the back of the pack there. The Zimbabwean athlete, Matafi in fourth place, and Kyoko, the other Kenyan, in third place. Monaghetti now, almost according to the script he gave us before he started the race. He, he talked to me the other day about that. He couldn't have planned this better. Guy 
surprised. Very, very threatening indeed. Still very little wind. Well, they've gone through heavy rain, thunder, lightning. Possibly not part of the uh, Monigetti plan, but everything else is. Everything except the weather has been part of the Monigetti plan. As he, as he works his way down the hill from Clover Point down to Ross Bay. And at that point, they swing inland for a little. This is where the course designers have been very kind to the runners. Because if it continued on this coastal path, there's some severe climbs in the next couple of miles ahead. But what they've done, they take them inland, so they miss the climbs along the cliffs and along the tops there. Have a much more comfortable route on the flat through the residential part of Oak Bay. And then they turn at the far end. You can just see McMicken Point at the far end where they turn and then head back the last 10 kilometers back towards Victoria itself. This is a really testing time for the Englishman. But he's sticking to it. I think he's only run one man of ever this year of London when he was 17. Obviously found out a lot that day though. Check on the leaders. Dave Moore and da Dave uh, Buzzer rather and Colin Moore. Also the Welshman Dale Rickson out of the picture for the time being. Past the Oak Bay Cemetery as they go inland. Well, that was a bit of a surprise to me. Steve Monaghetti made a break, got a little bit of a gap, and then he was closed down by Mark Hudspeth and Kyogo the Kenyan. And so far, we said everything been going according to plan for Steve Monaghetti. Well, that was the first interruption of the plan. I don't know why they got back to him, whether they accelerated or he slowed down. But this five-kilometer split is probably going to be the fastest of the whole race. Now Kyoko is pushing hard. You can see Hudspeth is beginning to struggle. monigetti has gone with the canyon. I thought this might be a difficult part of the race for Mark Hudspeth. And it's working out that way. He's just got to dig in there. And try and maintain contact. But it's awkward for him without any doubt at all. Yoko looking smooth and just stretching Monaghetti a little there. Steve Monaghetti, when he was in that in the lead, I thought he might put his head down and go for it, but no. He allowed them to catch him. And then Kyogo straight past him, and then stretching Monaghetti. Mark Hudspeth, a few yards behind there, running a great race so far. He's done everything right. Now the ambition for Mark Hudspeth has got to be to stay on the back of this too. Got to stay there if he possibly can because it's no, he doesn't want to run in no man's land for the last 40 minutes of this marathon. Mark head down every time they go up a slight rise, just beginning to lose those few yards as the Zimbabwean athlete Matafi is closing on him from in fourth place there in the green vest. call the twilight zone i just hope that uh, in fact in trying to win this race and go with the two leaders he's not going to pay the penalty of the closing stages and be run out of a place altogether certainly the of zimbabwe seems to be closing slightly kyoko monaghetti hudspeth 
on the copy. I wonder what uh, Steve Monteghetti is thinking. Well, most of his marathon career has had to contend with the Kenyan, the great Kenyan, Douglas Wakihuri. Now he's got another one, not so well known, only 23. Nicholas Giel, too. He's giving him a barrel workout. He certainly is. He took a little bit of a respite there when he sheltered in behind Kyoko. And now Monaghetti once again slowly applies the pressure. They're running through the residential area here. They're getting very good support on the side of the road. And that's good to help the concentration of the athletes to focus their attention. Mark Hudson in third place there, just being closed down by the Zimbabwean athlete. Steve Monaghetti, you just feel these twists and turns, the slight uphills and the slight inclines are working to Steve Monaghetti's advantage. Now this time, is it for real? Is this a bid for victory? That's Matafi, Zimbabwe. And Bato, 3-1-1. One, one. 